New York Times bestselling author John Grisham is returning to the beach for his milestone 50th book. It's called Camino Ghosts, and it tells the story of the fight over Dark Isle, a fictional island between Georgia and Florida that once served as a refuge for enslaved people who had escaped. It's the third in Grisham's Camino series, and the audiobook is narrated by someone whose voice might be familiar to you. It's Whoopi Goldberg. Take a listen. It was, after all, a beach wedding, and Mercer Mann, the bride, wanted sand between the toes. The suggested attire was beach sheet, which may have had one meaning in Palm Beach and another in Malibu, and probably something else in the Hamptons. But on Camino Island, it meant anything goes. First on CBS Mornings, John Grisham joins us now. John, uh, anything goes in the sense that it has to be compelling. That's the first paragraph she was reading of the book, and it really had me from the beginning. I felt like I was kicking off my shoes and joining people uh, on Camino Isle. This is inspired by your own vacations, right? Well, it's sort of, it's loosely based on Amelia Island, Florida, where we hang out and vacation for the past 20 years. Uh, that's kind of where we go to to hide. But uh, got the idea years ago of setting a novel there, a fun you know, beach read, summer read, fun read, uh, nothing heavy about it. So uh, that's, that's where the inspiration came from. I want to talk about Lovely, one of your characters. She's a descendant of enslaved people. And she says, we don't know the real history because it has not been taught. And you share some of the horrific details of what enslaved people dealt with at the time, what they experienced. What do you think readers are going to take from, from this book? You say it's not heavy, but there's some heavy stuff it's in it. It's pretty heavy stuff. I hope they get a good dose of history because we don't do a good job of teaching mm. all that the history of enslaved people, the slave trade. We sort of gloss over that. And uh, so you get a pretty good dose of what they went through, uh, through Lovely's, her ancestors' eyes and experiences. Um, but again, when you're writing popular fiction, you can't get weighed down too heavily in right. history. And my history is, uh, when you write history, it's kind of terrifying because you have to be accurate. And I'm not known for my accuracy. I just make stuff up because I'm a novelist. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just make it up. So I, I, don't, uh, I don't, really, uh, don't really worry too much about the history. But the history is so fascinating here that I had to get a pretty good dose of it. And it's, 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 historically, it's true because this particular area of Florida, Georgia, uh, was fought over because Georgia was a slave state. Florida was not until 1845. And, and the slaves in South Georgia would love to escape. They dreamed of escaping to Florida, not the Underground Railroad coming north, Going but south. they would run away to Florida. And the skirmishes were always brutal. They're trying to recapture the slaves. And also a lot of, a lot of really good history. I didn't know that. Mm. I, I love that uh, artists like yourself are picking up the mantle of trying to at least in their art infuse mm -hmm. the history that uh, we need to know more about. But uh, one of the uh, characters is someone who's a writer who's afraid of not having the next story. You just told us you make it up. Uh, <laughs> you've been doing it for 50 books. How, do you ever worry about not being able to make up a story that you can then put onto the page? I have not yet in, uh, in the last 35 or 40 years. When you, you know, I write about the law primarily. I was a lawyer for 10 years, and, and, I, and I read the law. I, study, I don't study, but I pay attention to law, lawyers, law firms, courts, trials, appeals, litigation, stuff like that. That's my, that's my interest. And I tell, I laugh and tell people, when you, when you, when you watch lawyers, the material is endless. There's so much good stuff. <laughs> that good or bad? Well, yeah. look at the headlines today. It's I was going to say. It's all, you know, it's every day, every week, there's always a new trial or, or controversy or something involving the law. The material is there. And, I, you know, you take that and you run it through a pretty hyperactive imagination. And I'm always looking for a good story. And yeah. so there's a, there are a lot of ideas. Well, you, well, go ahead. Yeah, speaking of material, you know, a lot of your books have been turned into movies. I mean, The Client, The Firm, uh, Time to Kill, and one called Runaway Jury. I wanted to show a little clip there in which uh, a certain someone made their big screen debut. Oh, really? <laughs> Wait. Wait. <laughs> What? Yeah, that's Michelle. That's me. That's, that's, you. that's me, John. Oh. That's you. I was a principal extra in the film Runaway Jury. <laughs> and I'm just curious, has Hollywood optioned this novel, Camino Ghost? Could we see it on the big screen? No, you know, that, those movies were made uh, back in the 90s. And uh, the, the business is so different now. It's been 20 years since, since I've had a feature film. And uh, we keep trying with TV and with film. And 
we have a bunch of deals, a bunch of balls in the air, but nothing, nothing, nothing yet. Well, Michelle's trying to make a career of the acting. Yes, curious, so, I am. I'm, I mean, you're curious. You're hard. I'll, I'll stick close. You're hard. We'll, we'll put you on that. Okay, thank You'll you. You'll be an extra. There you go. <laughs> hired a principal extra. <laughs> principal, principal. Don't leave that out. Speaking, and I wrote much of my material too. There you go. Back uh, all of it. John, you say that this is a love letter for independent bookstores. What do they mean to you, independent bookstores? Well, I love the independent stores because many years ago, when when the firm came out in '91. Before the internet, back then, you had to have the independent bookstores get behind a new writer. Nobody read A Time to Kill, so that was, I was still unknown when the firm came out. And the independent bookstores uh, really got behind the firm. Mm -hmm. And I toured a lot. And you could always count on the independents to have big signings, get their fans there. The, the staff knew the books. They would hand sell the books. And different different from today with the internet. but. But they were very important to me and to a bunch of writers over the years. The independents, they're, they're almost all gone now. Mm -hmm. We're down to about 1,500. Used to have 5,000. Mm -hmm. So we've lost a lot of stores. But uh, they're still there. They're still thriving, still fighting. It's a tough business. Yeah. John Grisham, 49 bestsellers. Best of luck with number 50. I hope you get there. Yes, <laughs> Promising <laughs> career. <laughs> yes. You got a future, kid. Yes. Just keep it up. <laughs> Here we go, Ghost. Beautiful cover. It's on sale right now. We'll be right back.